Hello everyone. So in the last lesson we learned about mechanical energy and we did the same looking question, but in this question we are going to do, well we're going to add 5 newtons of friction. So that's going to change things quite a bit. So what we would expect is that the energy at A, the total energy at A, will be more than at B. Because along the journey, energy is going to be lost due to friction. And so what we can do is we can first calculate the energy of the object at A, so we know that the total energy is called mechanical energy, and that's equal to the potential plus the kinetic. But at point A, the object is at rest, and so it doesn't have any kinetic energy, and so the only energy is due to potential energy. So the mechanical energy at A is going to be equal to the potential energy at A, which is its mass times gravity times the height of A. And so the mass is 2, its gravity is 9.8, and its height is 10. And so we end up with 196 joules. That is what we had in the previous question as well. Okay, so this object has 196 joules of energy at A. Now that would have stayed constant if there was no friction, but there is friction. I said in the previous video that on a, on a curved path we can't use this formula because the angle of the slope would constantly be changing and so your object's acceleration wouldn't be constant. But with the friction, we can use the work formula, this one over here. The reason for that is that the force of friction is always going to be 5. It's not going to change depending on how steep or how gradual the slope is. And so we know that the object has 196 joules of energy at A. We now need to work out how much energy is lost due to friction. Now remember, energy is the same as work. And so what we can do is we can take the force of friction, which is 5, the distance of the slope they've told us is 20 meters, so we can say 20. And now at any given point, let's say the ball is over here, that ball would be going in this direction and the friction would be going against it. So at any given point, we can say it's 180 degrees. And so that's going to give us negative 100. So the object has 196 joules at A, it loses 100 joules due to friction, and so at B it should have 96 joules of energy. So now that we have the energy at B, we've got everything we need because we know that the mechanical energy at B is equal to 96, and that's equal to its kinetic energy plus its potential energy. Because it's on the ground, its potential energy is zero, and so we can say that 96 is equal to its kinetic energy, and kinetic energy is a half mv squared. And so 96 is equal to a half, the mass is 2, but we don't know the velocity. Half of 2 is just 1, so that part falls away. And so 96 is equal to velocity squared. We then square root 96, and so we end up with a velocity of b equal to 9.8 meters per second. So notice in the previous example that we did, it was 14 meters per second, but due to a bit of friction now, that takes away some of the energy from the object, and so at the bottom, at B, it only has a velocity of 9.8 meters per second. Thank you very much for watching.